Hey there, friend, and welcome aboard. Stu Black here, HomestudioBasics.com, and today we will be reviewing the Hi-Fi Man HE 400i. Or 100 if you're white. <laughs> this is a planar magnetic, and we'll talk a little bit about planar magnetics today and how they work as opposed to your typical dynamic driver. Uh, these are circumoral, so they fit around your ear. They have a 35 ohm impedance, a sensitivity of 93 decibels, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 35,000 kilohertz. They are made of ABS plastic, polymer, and I believe velour encoded in sort of protein leather. I'm not entirely sure on that. We'll get into that in a bit as well. They sport a cable length of 1.5 meters and it's detachable. Let's talk about build. Build quality is pretty good. I mean, for uh, it's about a $400 set, I believe. They, they, feel, they feel pretty good in your hand, not too lightweight, not too heavy. Of course, pl planar magnetics have a reputation of being extremely heavy because of the extra magnets inside, but the headband is a little bit weird. The adjustment is strange. It's sort of like a, a hammock style adjustment, but it doesn't self adjust, so it's not really. It's just sort of, I don't know, if you can see here, you adjust them by basically pushing up the sides here, and it, it raises the, uh, the headband. But the headband doesn't have a lot of padding on it. it doesn't, I find it's not, I don't really need it. Uh, the headphones sit pretty well. This adjustment here is kind of strange. I mean, I put it on mine on one on either side. And if you try to adjust them while they're on your head, your hair might get caught. <laughs> like a piece of my hair got caught inside and it really hurt. It almost made me want to give a negative review. Just kidding. Yeah, the adjustment is rather strange, but as you can see, they fit pretty well. You sort of look like an alien, but not as much as like a Edition X or a Grado GS1000E. The cable is detachable. What the heck is going on? Terminates in this 2.5 millimeter, as you can see. So that's nice. I mean, some of the other Hi-Fi Mans, I believe, they had a um, coax. These, they terminate on the other end into a 3.5 millimeter L-shaped plug. It splits off into a Y. I find that it's not that big of a deal. The pads are made of velour encased in a protein leather, I think. It's kind of hard to tell, but also you can see that the cups rotate all the way, which is nice. So they fold in quite a lot of ways, similar to uh, the M50X. Now this is a close competitor to, of course, my beloved HD600. We'll get into the differences in sound in a bit as well. How about comfort? Comfort-wise, they're good. I mean, they're not, I don't think they're as solid as a HD600 in that those sit on your head a lot more stable. These take a little bit of fiddling to get a good fit. If you have them up too high, they tend to slide down and hit the top of your earlobe like a AD900X. I don't know if you're familiar with that headphone, but it has the wing tips. And without the rubber band mod, which brings those tips together, the headphone end just ends up going like this all the way down on your ears. And this, this one has a tendency of doing the same thing, but as long as you get the fit right. So overall, the uh, clamp force is pretty much perfect. I'm not sure how it is when you first buy them because this is a demo model from Audio Advice. I was finding myself making slight adjustments. By and large, these are, I'd give these above average on comfort. So how do they sound? The bass thumps, like it, it really hits, doesn't really roll off, which is nice, and but it doesn't it doesn't sound out of place. I wouldn't say this is a bass head headphone, but <sighs> oh, the signature is on the warmer side, but still with a lot of detail. The mid range is very pretty pretty flat across the board, but after around uh, 1k into 2k, kind of takes a dip. That's one of the differences between this and the 600. The 600s will sound a little more forward in regards to vocals, but that's not to take away from the mid-range on these, which is phenomenal. Both of these headphones have a darker treble, but I would say that the treble on the f these is a little brighter than a 600. You're gonna notice a tad more metallic flavor to them, which isn't really bad, it's just they're a little bit more revealing in the treble in some ways, I would say. 
but I, I love the base. I love the warm signature. I just prefer the cleaner, more sterile sound of the 600. And I don't know why that is. <clears throat> I think it's because for the longest time I was so used to bass heavy, warmer signatures that when I finally heard an analytical sound, I kind of migrated towards that. Like I said, these and the 600s have a very similar sound signature aside from a couple of things. These are a little bit brighter than the 600 and the treble. These are warmer than the 600, less sterile. So they're more lush, I would say. But it's, it's slight, you know? It's like it takes, I think I listened to about eight songs back to back comparing the two. And that's what I found. I, I would say hats, like hi-hats are more true to life. Instrument timbre, especially timbre, is um, a little better. Which is j basically just the character of the instrument and how, it, how it's supposed to sound. I think the 600s have a bit better instrument separation and clarity. The 600s are extremely refined in comparison. More sanitized. But I love the 400i. They have fantastic imaging, great timbre. Voices and lyrics were understood with better clarity. I could hear the timbre of the, of the instrument came through to where you could understand what it was doing more like a little bit of a veil was lifted. But if you're choosing between this and the 600, there's not gonna be some grand revelation that you get with one or the other. You're gonna love either, but it just depends on the kind of sound you're after. If you want a cooler, more analytical sound, go with the 600s. If you want a warmer, lusher sound with a bit more bass emphasis, I would say go for the 400s. Soundstage on these, I would say it's a bit better than the 600, but it's hard to tell. I mean, because the 600s provide a little bit better detail and clarity, I don't know, their image is a little bit more narrow than the 400s, just put it that way. Will you need an amp with these? I would say yes. They're only 35 ohms and they don't require a lot of power, like voltage, but the sensitivity is a bit low, so it's kind of like a, you're in a weird, you're in a weird place. I use mine with the HA, the Oppo HA2, which I got used from a guy at Audio Advice. It's amazing. But I would say definitely go for an amp with a DAC, amp DAC combo or something to that effect because plugged into your phone, you're definitely not getting the full full effect of these without an amp, I would say. So yeah, desktop solution, definitely the shit Magni Modi, which I always recommend. If you want something really portable, the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red is amazing. The biggest difference between a dynamic driver and a planar magnetic driver, which these have, is basically, well first, a driver is composed of a magnet, voice coils, and a diaphragm. The magnetic field created by the permanent magnet interacts with the magnetic field created by the voice coil. This relationship causes the voice coil to move, which in turn causes the diaphragm to move, which then results in sound. That's basically, how a driver works in a nutshell. But with a planar magnetic, there are more magnets and they're placed evenly around the diaphragm, basically resulting in a more constant flow. It's more even, it, it causes less distortion. The diaphragm is easier to move with the array of magnets placed around it. Does it make these better than a dynamic? I don't know. I mean, I didn't really notice a huge difference, but you're going to be amazed with these regardless. That's really about it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to like, dislike, comment, and subscribe to my growing channel. And I'll talk with you soon.